Hey everyone, it's Bob. Another beautiful day in Arizona. Well, we got some time off and I decided to catch up on some filming. One thing we're gonna do right now is attach a trailer hitch to the Rhino. Now, first off, before I even begin, I wanna give credit where credit's uh, due. There is a uh, ChinaWriters.net, it's a uh, forum for motorcycles, go-karts, ATVs uh, that are manufactured in China. I know we get a lot of grief, and uh, there's a few of us out there that prefer these uh, just because they're fun to work on. And uh, for all your technical questions, uh, pictures, uh, parts that are available online, different parts, suppliers, uh, pictures, uh, things that you need to know about your ATV slash motorcycle slash uh, go-kart uh, UTV that's uh, made in China, uh, go to ChinaWriters.net. Now, that's where I learned about this trailer hitch uh, deal that I'm about to uh, go through. Of course, I'm going to modify it myself, but overall, the, the, uh, the, the idea, the original idea came from ChinaWriters.net. I'd like to mention 2LZ. Uh, Mud Flap, Darth Vader, Weld and Grind. Those guys, that's their handles. They're the ones that, uh, they're real helpful. I just want to give them a shout out. Thanks, guys. So, what we're going to do is take some angle iron. I've got some scrap two inch by two inch angle iron. It's not scrap. I mean, I, I use it on my trommel, but I have a good bit of it laying around. And I think I'm going to take... Uh, a couple of 20 inch pieces, uh, 22 inch pieces I'm going to start with and, and then because uh, it takes two and then we'll uh, fit things a little bit better and measure them out. Okay the way this works is the angle iron two pieces is going to hook up to the swing arm. Now I'm going to cut 22 inches because I want to make sure I'll probably cut two feet yeah 24 inches two pieces of uh, two inch angle iron and uh, I'll have to trim it off once I make my mind up. I don't know if I want to start at the, the rear uh, swing arm where it attaches to the rest of the frame or to the next one down here. Uh, it all depends on how it cuts and fits but right now I want to cut two pieces of uh, 24 inch angle iron. All right well I've got two 24 inch lengths of 2x2 two two angle iron. Let's get underneath and see if we can't wrangle them into place. Notice that we've taken the bolt out for the rear shock absorber. That is where we're going to tie in uh, for the last piece of the trailer hitch to come out. Now. pieces of angle iron go in and we'll drill through both pieces of the angle iron and we'll get an extended bolt to go through here and of course we'll weld the trailer hitch area here now what we have to do is arrange it make a decision if I want to go all the way to the back piece of the swing arm or come forward this way and then trim off then trim off one portion of the angle iron so that the top will lay flat on whichever whichever cross member I decide to uh, utilize. Those will be held in place by two U-bolts. Let's cut the tabs out and then see, make our decision on which cross member we want to use. Okay, I don't know about the wind. Here's the angle iron, cut two feet. I want to read the measurements off to you. 
Everything is measured from this end here. This is the angle iron going in, okay? There's nothing here. All right, first thing is, from the very edge of the 24 inch, you measure a two inch and make a mark using a square. And then everything again, coming from here, moving over to here, it's four and three quarters of an inch. And make, use a square, make your mark. Coming back from this edge, six and five eighths. Use your square, make a mark. Coming from the edge here, nine and a half inches. Use a square, make a mark. Coming back from the edge over here, 11 and a quarter. Use your square, make a mark. Coming from this edge over here, 13 and a half. Make a mark. Coming back from the edge over here, measure 15 and an eighth. Use your square, make a mark. Okay? On this two inch mark here, you see where the X, you cut the whole section out. You're not gonna, uh, you're gonna wanna leave the back edge of this flush. So you're not gonna, when you make this cut across here, I don't know, leave a sixteenth of an inch or something like that to, uh, or maybe a little bit more so that the, the width of the piece in the back is, is accounted for. So this is completely taken out here. This all remains the same. And this over here, you want to cut in an inch and a quarter, an inch and a quarter, and then make your cut across. And this you leave alone. And over here, you want to cut in three quarters, three quarters, and then you cut across. This is for the cross members, because we're going to go all the way from the back cross member moving forward. This one here, again, three quarter of an inch in, three quarter of an inch in, cut across, and that'll be that. Now I want to cut these out and I'll show you how they fit. All right, so we got our cuts in and on the top. So let's see if it lays in. Way up on the back. And it sits right over. And yeah, it lays in nicely. And you can see the cut that we made for the for the chain guard holder. And then we're gonna drill right through here. Well first we have to make the other, which is gonna be exactly the opposite. We'll use this for a we'll use this for a template for the other one. We'll make the cuts in it, same cuts, and then we'll line that up on this side. And then it's a matter of making the holes for one hole through each of these that line up so that we can get an extended bolt that goes through the shock absorber that ties it in with the axle. And that's what we're gonna to use to hold this in place. One on either side. Here's the other, here's the other two inch. That's gonna go on the other side and the bolt will go through both of our angle iron pieces and then through the shock absorber uh, bottom attachment hole right there. All right, let's get the other, the other. Let's get this second piece lined up using the first piece that's cut already as a template. Using the piece that we already cut, we made our marks on the second piece that we need. We used the first piece as a template and then made the cuts on the second piece. Uh, on the top, I cut this end out for the chain guard uh, attachment. There's a, uh, I don't know, nut and a bolt uh, and, and, a, and a bracket there. And I cut out so it sits up there so we can still use the chain guard. And for some reason, I cut the same thing in on the other side. That's probably not necessary. However, the brake line for the rear brake kind of goes down or up in there, so it's not bad. I just want to round all this off. Uh, once we had all that cut, we laid everything in with this flat end right here laying on top of the rear cross member of the swing arm that's the most forward on the quad. And then we lined up and drilled the holes right here through both of them and these line up with the shock absorber where it attaches to the bottom of the axle housing 
So uh, where it goes, we pull the nut and the bolt out. These will go on either side of that. And then we'll throw this bolt right through here and then through that uh, shock absorber and then out on this side no. and then we'll tie it all in. This is the bolt that came out of the where the housing for the bottom of the shock absorber attaches to the axle housing. The shock comes up here. Okay. Now being as I'm going to add these two pieces, what is that, an eighth of an inch? That's what, a quarter inch more? So I went ahead to uh, Ace and got something that was about a half of an inch uh, longer just to make sure that I had plenty of thread to get everything lined up so um, it's a fine thread metric and you have uh, this I used the same nylon nut that came off of it I just matched the thread with this bolt that's a half an inch longer so everything fits well I tried it out. Now, the new bolts, you figure here is where the axle and the shock absorber bolt and all that go right there. And whatever extends out, this is where I'm going to attach my, my uh, ball, ball hitch. But up front, coming up to where this lays on the cross, remember, of the swing arm, the first one, it needs to be attached. It lays flat on there. So I went ahead and actually this is the second set of uh, U-bolts that I bought. The first one was just over an inch, inch and an eighth, and it was... Uh, and it wasn't good enough or it wasn't wide enough to get over that cross member it's like it's an inch and a quarter or something so I went and uh, stepped up a little bit of a thicker U-joint uh, U-bolt uh, this is 5 sixteenths times one and a half inch by two and an eighth inch right there I got these at Home Depot 5 16th of an inch by one and a half inch by two and five eighths inch. Okay, now this is much wider than the the cross member that it's gonna that it's gonna um, go over and bolt down. And you'll notice that I put these diagonally, so the cross member is gonna come this way. This is laying on top of it, and this is gonna come up. But the thing is. If the cross member, if I drilled these straight and the cross member sat straight in there, it would be loose. Where if I put it at an angle, uh, I can compensate for the uh, difference in the, the width and diameter of this uh, of this U-bolt. So instead of going in straight like this and drilling them the holes in line with this, and then the cross member sitting up in there, is too much play. But if I put it at an angle, I lose a lot of play. So that's the purpose of that. I'm not giving any measurements on this. What you're all going to have to do is line this up, get everything cut, put your shock absorber bolt in, and have everything laying. And this will be laying right on the on the cross member. And then go ahead, get underneath like I did, and I just marked with a magic marker where these were. And then I and I drilled them out. Okay. And then once, once I get these in, that's the next step. We're going to put these, set them in, put the shock absorber, bolt through the back. We're going to tie these up to the cross members, one on each side. Uh, I'm going to just kind of, I'm not going to talk it down. I'm just going to snug everything for now so that I can get the proper measurements on the back on how I want to set up my ball joint. So I'll get back to you when we figure out all of that. And get all this in place then I'll show you one more time hopefully all this is clear and you can understand that if not just send me some comments and uh, with any questions you may have so that's it for the time being okay the bolt that was going through the shock absorber is right here 
probably could have left it alone, but I wanted to make sure I had something a little bit longer. So here's the new bolt with the original nut. So I got another half inch. <clears throat> First one. Let me get the bolt through here. Sticking out. Now the next one. Lays in. Now come over here, start the nut. And now we're going to use the U joints.
Okay. Hopefully you can see all that. We'll pull this back. And there it is, two angle irons opposing each other on either side of the shock. The first of the swing arm cross members, actually it's the one that bolts to the frame. And we have the U-bolts uh, holding it on there. Now everything's just snug by hand. This is where we need to channel our focus because the ball hitch is going to be here somewhere somewhere and uh, I really haven't uh, looked for a piece of metal I'm looking for a plate that will come out that way and we'll weld it with a MIG uh, and then we'll sort out how we want to set it up either just a hole for a, uh, a pin hook or something big enough where I can put maybe a seven inch and seven eighths a, a ball hitch on there or both but stand by for that Well, we're in luck. Found some a good bit of uh, one eighth inch plate that we are using for the trommel uh, back in the scrap pile. So I've uh, cut out a little five and three quarters is the uh, width from the end of the one angle iron to the to the other. Um, so I'll be able to weld these there, and then this will be extended out. And uh, of course, all this will be rounded off and cleaned up, and then we'll we'll put our hole, whether it be for the, tr the hitch or the pin hitch or the or the um, one and seven eighths hit ball hitch. But anyway, we're going to get this cut out right now, and then we'll uh, clean everything up and worry about getting some welding done. And then it's going to be a matter of painting and getting everything set up. Much better. Okay. Excuse me for not having work gloves on when I was using the power tools. But I've got safety glasses at least. Anyway, here we go. Actually, I'm going to pull this out to where it clears the, the corners of the angle. Line it all up like this. 
this flush. And of course, got to put a hole in there and everything gets cleaned up. But, uh, we'll sand it all down with a, a flapper wheel. And then uh, we'll get everything tacked, welded up. And then uh, we'll etch it, prime it, and put some kind of a truck coat, uh, truck bed coating on there, duple coat or something like that. And then, uh, then it's ready to install and talk down, and we should be ready to haul the trailer.
strong. We're gonna paint it right now. Let you take a look at it when we finish her up. Okay. Yesterday you saw Alec welding. Got it all sanded down, welded, and primed, and we put some uh, Rust-Oleum primer, and then we went back with Rust-Oleum truck bed liner. Pretty durable finish. Well, ready to install. All right, well, we got our hitch on now. Sorry, you didn't make it all beautiful and brand new and show it to you, but uh, we had to get it on the trail. And we brought it out to uh, Yarnell. We're trying to get to the upper Antelope Creek area. And this time around, we're, using, uh, we're not going through Stanton anymore. We decided to go up the mountains on the highway to Yarnell and park and come down the other way. And we got up the path a little bit, but it was pretty good. But that's uh, a story for another time. Problems with uh, Alex bike, the uh, master cylinder. We were on that trail and uh, I don't know, he, he was complaining about his rear brake for a while and finally it just gave out. So we switched bikes, I let him drive this one and then we uh, we abandoned our trip and we came back and I just tried to take that master cylinder apart this morning, clean it, put it all back together again, but I can't get any brakes so I think uh, I'm going to have to get another master cylinder for it. <clears throat> but uh, the trailer hitch, I got that hole big enough where I can put a seven, uh, an inch and seven eighths, picked up a Harbor Freight lawn trailer, I hook it up to this and it's got uh, a real simple set up. It's just a, I don't know, a pin with a cotter pin and uh, we're going to bring it over here, attach it and pull off and I hope this is helpful to somebody and once again, you got a Chinese bike, a Chinese scooter, Chinese ATV, UTV, Chinariders.net. Man, I'll tell you what, a bunch of good folks with some good information, good technical advice. I can't, uh, I can't sing their praises enough. But anyway. Hook right up, just like the old country. Okay, so trailer works pretty good. The hitch sits a little bit high for this particular uh, trailer, but if this is just a Harbor Freight, $120 for uh, around here picking up hauling tools, whatnot. So uh, the main reason I got it is I just wanted to I wanted to try out my new trailer hitch uh, for the ATV, and it works just fine. So something I don't know if I mentioned before, but uh, I bought on eBay a VM26 Mikuni clone and we put it on there but before I put it on there I went to Jets R Us and I got a uh, pilot jet uh, we changed it to 50 and I don't know I forget what was on there and then uh, the primary jet we went to 150 115 sorry and uh, put them on there and I gotta tell you man the, the, the power Ooh, what a big difference 
from uh, the old carburetor that was on there, the stock one. Uh, I'm not too happy with this chain. We went down to a 428 chain uh, with a 41 tooth rear sprocket, and uh, that sprocket seems to be the same diameter as the stock sprocket. And uh, I did like that 11 tooth front sprocket uh, for the 428. It's tiny, uh, but it's still, you know we had to tack on the, the nuts, uh, the bolts, the little Allen head bolts that uh, that used to retain it. So. I think for the next time I come home, we're going to take the plunge and go back to the 530 chain that was on there uh, and go ahead and go to Why Go Stock and pick up the custom 41 tooth 530 chain for the rear sprocket. It's, it's a lot bigger. Uh, and of course, at $33, that's like going to be $80. $33 for the front sprocket and whatever else for the uh, retainer and Okay. So, we had it out yesterday, and like I said, coming up those, uh, going up the hills, it really did well with the carb, and a, that's a bit of a difference with the, uh, with the smaller sprocket in the front, but my concern is the, the, uh, the steepness in the rocks, uh, just looking at that chain, it's much smaller than the 530, and I just feel a lot more comfortable with that 530 on there, so. That's uh, another reason why we're going to go back to it, I think. And that's about it. I think we're going to get some new tires, maybe, too, next time around. But uh, I'm loving it. Still love my Tau Tau 250 Rhino. All right, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you real soon. Thanks for watching.